How to be a good real estate investor? Great question. We're gonna cover that and a little bit more on this episode, so stay tuned. When I'm watching Instagram, one of the first things I need to do to show that I'm a good real estate investor is show my Lamborghini. No, it's not to show my Lamborghini. It's to actually a good real estate investor should be happy about what they do and show their projects, goofballs. You don't want to show the Lambo. Come on, man. Are we showing assets or liabilities? We're going to show assets, not liabilities. All right. So when you watch people and they're showing their Lambos, maybe peel a couple layers back. If they're not showing you the projects they're doing, what are we really doing? What's really going on? And I'll just speak from experience and some of the people that I follow and have a lot of respect for, they're not showing their Lambos either. What they're showing are the assets they're doing. They're showing the work that they're doing, how they're getting the deals, finding the deals, repositioning, how to exit, all of this stuff, how to maximize profits. They're not showing the Lambo. So if you're watching the person doing the Lambo. When you really want to learn real estate, jump to somebody else's page that actually does it. How to be a good real estate investor. All right. So I'll get jokiness aside about the Lambos and all the, the other stuff. I realize that that may pull you in and think, okay, that's really cool. I like seeing it, but you really want to learn how to do real estate and how to become a good real estate investor is not showing off what you have. That's just my personal opinion, you, you do whatever you're going to do. To be a good investor, you have to do a couple things. I say these three things often. I say them a lot, especially if you're moving into a new field. I don't care if you're a real estate investor going into a new endeavor or you're a computer programmer moving into real estate. These are things that I think you need to live by regardless of whatever you're doing. And that is, there's three main things. You need to do what you say you're going to do. So if you tell people you're going to do something, that could be from buying the property um, to showing up to an appointment to paying somebody, you name it. If you say you're going to do it, just do it. It's really that simple. The more, the more you do things that are consistent like that, that's what your reputation is based on. If you're going to basically retrade or um, not follow through, you're going to get the reputation for that too. And guess who they're not going to go to, to sell a deal to, especially if you say, Hey, I'm going to do it. And then you don't do it. So don't get in the habit of doing, doing things you're not going to do. So you want to be reliable, reliability, wholesalers, people selling their properties. These are big assets. What they don't want to do is work with someone's wishy-washy and it's always flipping. So make sure you do what you say you're going to do. Got it. It's number one. Before we get to number two, I need you to do me a favor. Go ahead, go down below, subscribe, make a comment. What do you think are the biggest things of, as far as attributes and what you need to do to become a great entrepreneur or good at business in general? Go ahead, comment below, please. Outwork everybody. It's really that simple. I know you don't want to hear this. Like I know somebody says that they've made investing in real estate and fixing and flipping so easy you could do it from your phone. Don't believe it. Listen, I don't know any good real estate investor sitting back on their phone, flipping houses from their phone. It's just like maybe someday. Okay. But here's what's going to happen. You're going to have to grind to get to that spot. So let's just throw that crap out the window right now and get serious. You're going to have to work your ass off. So number one, do what you say you're going to do. Number two, work, work, work. Whoever's working around you, work harder. You're going to have to do it. There's no substitute for it. You're not going to be able to outmaneuver it. So just get used to working hard. It's kind of like getting, I, I always say it's like getting the plane off the tarmac. Once you're up off the ground, it's a little bit easier, but it's burning all that fuel to get up off the ground. It's no different than your business. You got to put all that energy in to get it up off the ground. And then you start getting a residual coming in and then another one and then another one. And now, Hey, now we're up in the air. Now we're five, 10, 15, 20,000 feet. Right? So same type of analogy. Okay. So what do we have? We have do what you say you're going to do and work hard, work harder than everybody. The third one is sacrifice. You're going to have to sacrifice some stuff. What does that mean? That means like maybe there's something going on on a Friday night, Saturday night, and maybe an opportunity for you to take advantage of a good real estate deal came up. Everybody else went to the bar, went to the party. What are you going to do? You're going to go to the party and enjoy yourself, or are you going to go 
sacrifice that time and go take advantage of this deal that everybody else is sleeping on where you could get ahead. It's gonna pay dividends later. Part of it's making those early deposits so you could extract them at a later date. That's sacrifice. Yes, you're, maybe you miss some. And I know we're all about work-life balance. I gotcha. But in the beginning, you're gonna to have to just submerge yourself and get used to it. And you're gonna to have to sacrifice some stuff. You're gonna miss some opportunities to spend with the family. Sorry, I just don't know anybody getting rich on a nine to five schedule. And so the stuff I'm saying may not be what you wanna hear, but it's the truth. Truth or comfort. If you guys, you know, what do you wanna hear? Do you want the truth or do you want comfort and someone to tell you you could do it from your phone? I have yet, in fact, I should invite that person on on this program and they could show me how easy it is to do from their phone. E, phony. Those three things are kind of your co core competence, right? Do what you say you're gonna do, outwork the next person, and uh, sacrifice. That could be sacrifice some money too to do the right thing, to bring in a bill, do higher quality work, bring in quality workers, um, take care of them, pay them correctly. This is like huge. A lot of people like to cut corners, their product shows it. Don't be that person. Deliver a good solid product. After your closing, go back. Make sure you're available to take care of any issues. You flippers know like if you flip a house, there's always some sort of residual. You could sit there and go, well, they bought the warranty or you could just stand behind the product, check on it, make sure they have your number. If there's any issues or questions, just take care of it. That's going the extra mile. What happens is those people become what? Your cheerleaders. They become you know, your champions. They're championing you to maybe the next house down the street going, oh, I bought a house from John. The thing was a piece of crap. Why would you, don't buy a house from him. Do you want that or do you want, oh my God, I bought a house from John. He's been the, the best to work with. You should buy that house. Like seriously, you have nothing to worry about. Things like that, right? I've been ecstatic and happy with ours. So it's those little things that kind of just change the, change the message that other people are going to say about you. So when you ask yourself, are you doing the right thing in this scenario? And if it's not, then pivot and do the right thing. So these are things to become a, not just a, a great real estate investor, but you also uh, wanna be a great person in general. Just you want people to say positive things about you. And so the only way they're going to is if you're doing stuff right, okay? So keep that in the back of your mind. When investing, you want to be able to learn and know how to underwrite a deal. When you're underwriting the deal, you also want to be able to stick with those numbers. Do not become emotionally charged or involved with the deal. Once you do, you kind of lose rationale and you start playing with the numbers. Maybe you start pushing numbers to make them make sense in your favor. Maybe I'll sell at a higher price than most, uh, than the highest you know, dollar per square foot. Or maybe it's going to cost me less to to rehab this one than I'm thinking. You guys, once you stick with, once you have your numbers, stick with it. You know, if you can make improvements as you're doing it, great, but don't try to force the deal. Don't chase the deal. When I say don't become emotionally involved, when you start chasing the deal and you're paying too much to get that deal, usually we make bad decisions. That goes for, in general, anything. You chase somebody, if you wanna be in a relationship too hard, you seem too needy, and usually that relationship doesn't work out. Same thing goes with real estate. So it's just something to pay attention to, okay? Also to become a good real estate investor, you have to be well networked. I can't tell you like the last time I went out and actually had to hunt for deals. Now I'm well networked enough. And all I'm saying is like people bring me deals often, often enough to keep me busy. And they make sense. So it allows me free time to take on more deals versus go out and hunt for them. That all happens through what? Through the network, doing what you say you're gonna do, the hard work, delivering, doing things right. So I'm, again, I'm sharing with you what's working for me and working for the people I work with. So I wanna share that with you. Here's the last thing. What you wanna do also is pay it forward. Help people get into the market that usually wouldn't have an opportunity to. As long as they're expressing interest, help those people get into the market. It's one of the things we do. And that being said, if you're looking at getting started in real estate, click on the link below, schedule a call with myself or one of my team members, complimentary, the sessions on us. We're gonna go ahead and comp it. Let's see if we can get you going in the right direction at least, clear out some of the cobwebs and get you going. Appreciate you watching. Click on the link also to subscribe if you haven't. Looking forward to talking to you. Take care.